Picture this, all of your meals are ready for the week ahead. You don't have to stress about what you're eating or if you have time to make the healthy meals you want to at home. You're only cooking and cleaning one time this week. You're saving money. Your week is ready and so are you. Join me and I'll walk you through the process that changed my life. First up on the agenda, I'm gonna chop up my Brussels sprouts and put them onto a sheet pan to roast in the oven. I find it extremely valuable to think about the order I'm gonna prep everything in to make this process go a lot faster. So I know that my Brussels sprouts will take a long time to roast. I know I'm using them fresh. I'm not using them frozen. So I want to get them into the oven first thing. While I chop my Brussels sprouts, let me formally welcome you to my channel and say I'm thrilled you're here with me today. I'm Lisa and I love sharing my meal prep process. I've been meal prepping in some form for a decade and the impact it's made in my life has motivated me to share the process with you all. If you're interested in my advice on meal prepping or you're curious about my own journey and why I love meal prepping, then keep watching this video and hit that subscribe button. I'll share meal inspiration and helpful tips on batch cooking, AKA meal prepping. All right, now that my Brussels are all chopped up, they're on my sheet pan, they're ready to go. I'm gonna drizzle over some olive oil. I love extra virgin olive oil. You could do any vegetable oil you want. And we'll give them a healthy drizzle here, but we'll keep in mind too that Brussels sprouts are one of those things that really need that little bit of, um, they want some of that fat from the olive oil to really make them taste, you know, the way we all like to eat them. <laughs> I'll also add some salt and some fresh ground black pepper. And once we're peppered, we'll give them a toss and we'll put them into the oven. All right, so the other thing we're gonna get chopped up and into the oven to roast, because I know it'll take a long time, are these rainbow carrots. You can see for a second, I was like, how do I want to slice these? So decided on some um, some nice diagonals. I just like the, you know, I love a matchstick for a carrot, but I just felt like the diagonals were kind of fun and they'd be so pretty with these um, multicolored carrots as well. Okay, it was right about here that I realized, oh yeah, I didn't put any parchment paper down and I do love using parchment paper. I know it's probably, I don't need to, or I don't have to, it's wasteful. I'm sorry, it just makes it so much faster to clean up and especially after the end of a long meal prep process and for me, not only cooking but filming, um, it just makes the process so much easier for my husband and I to get you know everything, the kitchen back into, into its normal, you know, clean state um, with everything put away and yeah. So I do parchment paper, I always trim it down. I had a piece get really, really burned one time and I thought it easily could have caught on fire. So I'm paranoid, I guess, about that from now on. So I always cut it down, but um, I think really the biggest thing is how long it's in the oven and um, also what temperature you're cooking it at. So there's definitely a temperature on all parchment papers that says it's safe till. So check your parchment paper if you're using it. If not, just right onto the baking sheet it goes.
Alright, so now that my carrots are all chopped, I mean, look at these rainbow carrots. I definitely spent, uh, spent more buying rainbow carrots but they're just so pretty and i love the idea too that you know a mix of colors also means different nutrients so um, i love these rainbow carrots and yeah they were delicious so i did some olive oil i'm gonna do some salt and pepper as well and these carrots are joining the Brussels sprouts in the oven and I'll move on to the next thing. So, oh yeah, always a little, a little sip of coffee to keep this chef, uh, keep this chef going. So a little coffee break. I definitely forgot to film the beginning of cutting these sweet potatoes. So sorry y'all. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna dice my sweet potatoes. I love sweet potatoes, especially roasting them in the oven. So these are getting into the oven. They're going in next. I'm throwing these into one of the containers I use when I'm prepping a ton of veggies. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever used these before or seen these. Uh, and I've never worked in a restaurant or kitchen or food service in, in that way, like preparing vegetables, sous chef vibes, you know? Um, but these are really popular in food service and restaurants, so I highly recommend them. They're super easy uh, to wash, to clean, to store. They stack within each other, um, within themselves, um, and I just love them. So just wanted to tell you all that here too. I bet you can guess what's going to happen with these now that they're all diced. They're going onto a dun 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 sheet pan with parchment paper and they're getting olive oil, salt, and pepper and they're going into the oven to roast with their other friends.
All right, so the oven's full, so I'm gonna just prepare these chickpeas. I already drained and rinsed them, and I'll do a little bit of olive oil here, along with salt and pepper. So these are ready to go into the oven, but since the oven's full, I'm gonna set them aside for now. Next up, we're gonna trim, we're gonna cut up some trimmed leeks. I bought these from Trader Joe's. Cooking with leeks is definitely a newer thing for me. Uh, I didn't like grow up cooking with these or I really haven't been exposed to them a ton, but I really, really love them and I'm learning different ways to clean them. So you'll watch and see. <laughs> I definitely had an adventure uh, figuring out what's the best way to clean these. So um, I'll trim the ends off and yeah, so the ones that I bought were already trimmed down a lot, um, but they're still not cleaned. So a lot of leeks have all these different layers, right? So a lot of the, uh, a lot of the, from the way that they're grown and, you know, whatever, a lot of the dirt can end up in between these little layers. And obviously, you know, we're trying to not eat dirt. Um, so <laughs> I liked slicing them like this and then I just kind of popped them all out. So, um, you know, that they'll uh they'll separate and i'll you'll see i kind of like toss them together and then rinse them and yeah this was quite the adventure of a learning for me so maybe the most ironic part is i ended up you know i'm gonna completely like pulverize these i'm gonna blend them uh so the irony that it really didn't matter how i cut them they just needed to be cleaned was not lost on me oh yeah see there's some dirt right there pointing that out um so I ended up cutting up four total leeks, so you'll see me go through that next. All right, so my leeks are all cut. I put them in the bowl and then I put some water in there too. And this is where, you know, I started to learn. I start, was starting to separate them and thinking about how am I gonna rinse them in this bowl? and. Um, yeah, I got a little smarter, maybe. Um, I put them into my salad spinner. Um, that's definitely a bigger bowl just anyway, so that made it easier. So I'm gonna go take the salad spinner uh, to the sink and add some more water in there too. So yes, now that I've got more water in there, I'm just gonna, you know, kind of separate each of them and look for any, you know, dirt or anything, um, any, you know, anything that's in there. So, oh yeah, and the Brussels had to come out of the oven. So now they're out of the oven the I dumped most of the water out and now I'm going to spin them uh, just to really get the rest of it and get the water get them nice and dry At this point, I was really proud of myself because this worked so much better than what I had plan been planning initially. Um, so yes, as I mentioned, I took those Brussels sprouts out of the oven. They're not completely done, um, but I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna toss those chickpeas on with them because it's really to, they, I need the Brussels sprouts to cook a lot longer than the chickpeas. So I don't wanna add the chickpeas on at the same time. Um, so the Brussels sprouts got a head start. I'll toss them in, uh, <laughs> in with the Brussels sprouts and then they'll go back into the oven. And really, this is one of the skills that you can learn too, is being able to multitask. So that can be really overwhelming at the beginning of trying to think about, you know, all the ingredients, things in the oven, things on the counter, things, you know, being washed and all that stuff. So that can be really, really overwhelming at the beginning. So don't worry, you're not alone. It's overwhelming for me too sometimes. So I'm here for you. Um, I'm going to take my wash leaks and they're going into that bowl that the, um, chickpeas were in so there's a little bit of olive oil salt and pepper already in there too and that's totally fine for what's gonna happen to these leeks <laughs> next up in the order of operations i'm gonna cut up my chicken as a reminder i highly recommend uh, using a specific cutting board for for different things especially for meat i highly recommend meat always having meat seafood you know anything raw like that having its own cutting board yes you can clean these, of course, you know, soap, water, sanitize, um, but it doesn't really, it, it, there's just, you're making tiny little micro cuts into a cutting board. So have a separate cutting board for 
meat. And I also do this for um, garlic onions uh, as well. So I would never cut like fruit on my garlic onion cutting board, but I might cut tomatoes. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, if you have any thoughts on this too, leave them in the comments, please. I'm interested to hear everyone's thoughts. Chicken's all diced and ready to go to uh, onto the stove. Um, I'll spray my countertop. You guys know I'm OCD about cleaning uh, this thing, so I let it sit um, and then I'll wipe it down. And I'll get started on this part. So I'm going to do olive oil into the pan and that chicken that I just cut up is going in here. So I'm uh, moving that quickly so it gets all gets coated with some olive oil. Everyone's looking beautiful in the oven. Yay, everybody's done. So I'm going to just put them all into onto one sheet pan, mostly just for space to save a little bit of space. So yeah, watch me carefully try to... <laughs> not spill any of these oh she did it i think i was pretty successful to my memory um so yeah i'm just gonna do that really just to save some space <laughs> so my chicken's cooking my oven is now free but i need to get my containers set out so i'm gonna set out all my containers now um yep definitely setting them out with some you know ocd fussiness Oh, I brought too many, so I'm only doing five days, so I'll put one back um, and I'll get all the rest of them set up. So I just find that this helps so much with, you know, planning or really just portioning everything out. And of course, it's beautiful for you all at the end um, <laughs> so you can see everything that I made. So if I weren't filming this, I maybe I think that I would still do this, um, but maybe I wouldn't be so like, you know, OCD about them being absolutely perfect. So now that i now that they're all out on the out and sitting sitting out excuse me um i'm gonna stack uh my my containers on here for uh the next step
container's ready, we'll hit pause on that because we're gonna check our chicken. Yes, it's done. Um, so we're gonna take it out of this bowl um, and set it aside. But then we're gonna add some olive oil, nice amount of olive oil there. We're gonna add in the mirepoix next. I love this, it's uh, so easy. It's already cut up, thank you Trader Joe's. Um, celery, carrots, onions, and you can see here that it's deglazing the pan a bit. Oh, and here's a chef having fun. <laughs> Um, oh yeah, all smiles, that's right, having a good time. Um, so you can see too, since it's deglazed, um, you know, I'm, we're also adding in some salt, but this, this kind of acts, because these veggies have moisture in them, it kind of, it will deglaze the pan for you too. So, uh, I didn't have any fresh garlic this week, um, but I did have roasted garlic, so I used that. I definitely didn't have to, you know, use my roasted garlic here, but, um, when I buy a lot of garlic, I always roast it and uh, I like to throw some in the freezer just to have it on hand. So this was frozen and now it's thawed, so it's going into. I know you guys can see what I'm doing, but I really wish you could smell this. It just, the fragrance, oh, it's so incredible. Mm. Next in, that's all got a head start uh, and cooked down a bit. So putting in my leeks in next. Um, these will, uh, I only put half, my pan's not big enough for the whole amount, so I'm going to give these a, a nice stir in here too, and they'll soften, um, and start to brown and caramelize as well. All right, now that everybody's cooked down a bit, I mean, how beautiful is this? Um, everybody's cooked down a bit, I'm going to taste one of the leeks. Oh, does she approve? Oh yeah, she approves. Delish. Um, deglazing with a little bit of water here, of course. You could use uh, stock or wine or whatever you want, but I just like to keep it a little bit lighter. So I use water um, and just kind of getting those little brown bits off the bottom. All right, now that we're deglazed off the not only the bottoms and the sides, um, I'm going to remove from the heat and we're getting that immersion blender in here. If you don't have one of these, I cannot recommend it enough. I, If you guys have watched any of my other videos, you know that I love it. Um, previously, I had the week before cauliflower was on sale, so I had bought cauliflower then and I roasted it. I knew I wanted to use it in soup and or planning on my part. I thought that I had a lot more uh, bone broth at home. I did not. So all I had with this was this beef broth. Um, looking back, I definitely would have uh, loved to use vegetable broth or chicken, chicken instead of beef, but it turned out fine and really didn't uh, impact the flavor that much. So yeah adding in some more until it really becomes soup texture and you know hindsight's 2020 i definitely wanted some texture to this but i think if i were doing it again i would have blended it for longer and also added um, more water in so you can kind of see me go through that process here but you know we live and we learn so um, all the vegetables are blended and then i'm adding that chicken back in um yeah see i like it tastes really good it was just really thick so you know we live we learn what can we do um, I'm getting uh, my boiling water from my kettle onto the stove into my um, into my pan here highly recommend doing that it really helps the process move along um, so fast I think it boils so much quicker than from being on the stove on high um, and I'm getting the farro into uh, my pan here I'm obsessed with farro too so Okay, so now we're gonna get started on our other thing. Um, I'm, I'm obsessed also with this container for my oats. I have the same one for rice. It's so nice to buy these things in bulk and save some money, but it's really hard to store them. I don't like keeping them in the bags that they come in. And um, this also is like an airtight seal. It's a really great way to keep everything fresh too. So yeah, and it also came with this little scoop. So that is that was a nice little added benefit. So I'm going to add my oats in here.
Now that my oats are portioned out, I'll grab a bowl and guess what fruit I'm gonna add this week? I am cutting up dun, 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 apples. So I'm gonna make apples. I'll add some warm spices too. Um, so I'm gonna get these all cut up uh, into, you know, maybe a smaller dice um, and or like a cube, I guess. Um, so yeah, so I'll get these apples cut up I'll cut around the core. This is one of those moments when I definitely wish I had one of those fancy apple cutters to make this go, you know, just that little bit faster. But alas, here we are. So I'll cut my apples up next. Apples are all cut up. I'm gonna add some of those warm spices. I'm adding cinnamon, nutmeg, um, ginger, and um, oh yes, some cloves as well. Oh, definitely had to. These need a these need a little bit larger of one of the opening, I guess. Um, so I'm gonna give those a stir. Once I'm happy with how uh, distributed the spices are on the apples, I'm going to portion these into each container. And again, another thing I wish you could smell because this just smelled so warm and cozy and mm, baked apples are just something else really. Next thing, now that all my apples and oats are in there, I'm gonna add in my liquid. I'm using dairy milk. You can absolutely use whatever milk you like. Uh, it's really up to you. Um, you can also use just water if you um, don't want, you don't wanna use milk, you don't want the calories from milk, whatever. You don't like the taste of you know any kind of milk at all. Um, up to you, of course, it's always up to you. It's gotta work for you. So if you look to, um, we want everything to really be swimming. So we don't want them to be super dry. I honestly probably could have added a bit more and it would have been fine too. Um, but I, I want my, I want everything in here to be kind of swimming in there. Um, it was also in this moment that I realized I forgot to spray um, <laughs> the apple side. So, you know, oh well, it's okay. So I'm spraying this side um, for the other part of my breakfast, which is really my savory part. Time for the next thing, which is corn muffins. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna not, I'm not gonna follow the package directions exactly here. I'm gonna follow, um, you know, them inspirationally maybe, um, but I'm gonna use this, this mix. Probably could just use cornmeal if you want, but I had this box of, uh, corn muffin mix so we're using it so I'm gonna add my mix into my bowl first and I'm gonna grab from the fridge eggs so the package directions don't call for this many eggs but I really want this to be an egg forward dish uh, if you follow me for any amount of time you probably have seen that I eat something 
savory. I always make something savory and I always make something sweet for breakfast almost every single week. I really don't like to just have one or the other. Um, you know, the, I guess the traveler in me knows that Americans love eggs for breakfast and other countries it's not as common. Um, but I love eggs for breakfast. It's just, it's my favorite thing, um, to have for breakfast. So I could, I could skip the oatmeal, like the sweet part of breakfast, but I cannot skip the savory part. So I wanted to, you know, make these just, uh, you know, take them up a little bit, <laughs> kick them up a notch. So I sliced some scallions and I put those in here as well. Um, and you know, just added some extra, you know, some extra flavor. And as I was mixing these up, I thought, you know what else might be really nice in here? Some Italian cheeses. So I'm adding some of uh, the Quattro Formaggi uh, from Trader Joe's. I forget which cheeses are in here, but just adding some cheese. So kind of like a, you know, if I had cheddar, actually, that would have been really, really good. Like unexpected cheddar from TJ's um, with scallions. Mm -mm -mm. But these were delicious too. So um, I added some cheese in here. So I'll give them a final whisk and then I'll get them into their containers and then we'll get into the oven. So while those cook, this girl knows she's almost done. We're almost to the end. Maybe this is the part where I get a little delirious. Um, I've got these lentils. I could not recommend these more. These are one of my most favorite things. A friend introduced me, shout out, shout out to my friend Sasha for introducing me to these lentils from TJ's. They have the best flavor. I love eating them hot or cold. Soup, salad, you freaking name it. They are everything. They're so good. And they're French lentils too. So, you know, c'est magnifique. Um, next, I'm adding in some ground turkey and some kale. Oh yeah, gotta get all the, every little bit. We don't leave anything. <laughs> we don't leave anything in there. We want it all. Um, okay, so next we'll mix that up. And I also will break down the lentils a little bit too. They're all separate. They're not like one big mushy thing, but they are, you know, they were in this package. So we'll break them down a little bit. My cooked farro's going in. Yum. I also could not recommend farro more as well. Um, it's essentially kind of like the, the shape, I guess, of rice, but the texture is so delicious. It's um, so hearty. It's chewy. It's, um, it just has really, it takes on the flavor of whatever you make with it, but I just love that it's just that little bit more chewier than even brown rice. Um, it's seriously a fave. Um, so now that that's all mixed up, we're going to add in all of those veggies that we had cooked and roasted earlier. So again, we've got our Brussels sprouts, our chickpeas that were in there too, our sweet potatoes and our rainbow carrots so look at that yeah i got excited because it just looked so delicious and so hearty and warm it just looked amazing and it tasted amazing too so beautiful she's so happy and really the best part about something like this is you could easily change the flavors this i will add like a my own little dressing to every day um i'm just gonna do really simple vinaigrette but you could add really whatever dressing or flavor or sauce you wanted to to this mix because it's so versatile and it's just mwah, chef's kiss delicious it's basically like one of those fancy um salad places um but it's at home so you know we love a little save some save some moo la la and um and you know exactly what's in this you know you saw it you made it you already knew what's uh what's in each and every bite that you're having
Now that those are all portioned out, now that those are all portioned out, we'll move on to the next meal, which is our cauliflower leek soup um, with some chicken in there as well. So I'll give it a, a stir. It was um, being kept warm on the stove and it smells amazing. Again, so many good flavors and smells here. Um, so I'll portion that out next. Side note here, if you want to add any kind of side with this for like dipping or something, whether that's like a toast um, or crackers or something, I wouldn't add that into these containers now. The moisture content between the soup and the crackers, even if they're separated, is not going to, it's not really going to work, um, you know, for, for everything to stay fresh. So just add those in um, fresh as you'd go every day, or maybe you could do the night before too. Uh, but don't put them, I really don't recommend putting them in with the soup um, right away, even though they're, they have dividers. It won't, uh, those are some, some lessons learned along the way, so hot tip there. You know I had to give this a taste. There was only a tiny bit left, so this chef took a took a little bite and yum, so good. All right, so now we're prepping for our breakfast is getting ready to come out of the oven. So because I know it's gonna be piping hot, I'm gonna put down um, some towels uh, onto my counter. So I'll get that out of the oven. I mean, look at this. Oh, she's so cute, delish, sweet, savory, yum really bringing these containers out of the oven and both you know sides of the meal are done i love that i can put these into the oven for a long time i had containers that i couldn't put into the oven directly and i had to make everything and transfer it and you guys can see sometimes i still do that with other meals but with things that can go in the oven um easily i it just makes such a difference um for me truly uh and now that i'm thinking about it, honestly i probably could have roasted some of those veggies in each container separately um but you know hindsight's 2020 we're living we're learning and having a good time too Oh, Chef Lisa is so happy. She's got all three meals done. They're just cooling off. And I'll also add some honey on top of these two. I had thought I had actually forgot to put it in before. So I'm glad I remembered or else that probably would have just tasted very, very bland. So adding a little bit of honey on the top of my baked oatmeal too. And that is a wrap on meal prep this week. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for subscribing. I sincerely appreciate it. I love sharing this process with you and I am so happy you're here. Have a wonderful week ahead.